Hello guys, welcome to this very short tutorial on the anatomy of the femur. So the femur is the bone that you're going to find in the thigh and it's going to be the long bone, the longest one in the body. And if you look at the femur, just like the inner and the upper limb, it's going to have a head that forms two thirds of the sphere. And if you look at the central or almost central region of the head, there's going to be the fovea cavities where you're going to have attachment for the ligament of the head, which is going to convey a small branch of the obturator that brings the blood supply. So this is going to be the head, and from the head you're then going to have a neck which is directed downward, backward and lateral, and it's going to meet the shaft of the femur at this point here. And you're going to have formation of an angle which normally is 125 degrees in males or less in females, than in children it's actually going to be 160 degrees. And clinically an increase in this angle will actually be coxa vulgar, whilst a decrease in the angle will be coxa vara. Then if you look at this region, this is going to be the greater trochanter, was this will actually be our lesser trochanter. The greater trochanter will provide for insertion to a lot of muscles, particularly those of the gluteal region, to include the gluteus medius and the minimus. We're also, also going to see the small lateral rotators of the hip, except the quadratus femoris attaching here. Whilst the lesser trochanter in this region will actually provide for insertion for the iliacus muscle and the psoas major muscle through an iliopsoas tendon. Then anteriorly, these two are going to be joined by an intertrochanteric line, whilst posteriorly you'd expect an intertrochanteric crest to join the two. And just inferior to the greater trochanter, you'd expect to see the gluteal tuberosity. And if you look at the shaft, the shaft of the femur is actually going to be smooth anteriorly and rounded. But if you look at it posteriorly, it's going to have a ridge, which in this case, it's our linear aspera. The linear aspera will provide compensation for the adductor muscles, particularly the adductor longus, brevis, and the adductor magnus. It's also going to provide for attachment for the vastai muscles that are going to be forming part of the quadriceps femoris. And this linear aspera will also provide for attachment for the intermuscular septa that are going to divide our thigh region into three. Remember, we're going to have an anterior compartment, a medial compartment, and a posterior compartment. Then distally, this linear aspera is actually going to continue with the supracondylar lines, the lateral supracondylar and the medial supracondylar lines. And this medial supracondylar line would then become continuous with this prominent tubercle in this region, which is the adductor tubercle. The adductor tubercle will actually provide for insertion for the, for the adductor magnus. Remember, the adductor magnus will insert both into the linear aspera and the adductor tubercle. And the gap between those two insertions, we are going to see the adductor hiatus as um, structures leave the adductor canal to gain access to the popliteal surface uh, or the popliteal fossa of the, the back of the thigh, which in this case, this will be the popliteal surface of the femur, this triangular shaped region that is existing between those supracondylar lines. And then if you look at it distally, these are going to be the two condyles of the femur, and the two condyles are going to be separated posteriorly by an intercondylar uh, notch, whilst if you look at it anteriorly, the two are actually joined by this articular surface for the patella, which is going to be a small sesamoid bone that exists in front of the knee joint. Then if you look at um, the condyles, they continue either laterally or medially into your epicondyles. In this case, you'll be having a lateral, you'll be having a medial, a medial epicondyle and a lateral epicondyle. Then if you look at um, the bone as well, as you're going to have fractures in the upper third, right? Uh, the, that proximal fragment is actually going to be laterally rotated by the small lateral rotators that are going to be attached to the greater trochanter, then it's going to be uh, abducted by the gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus that are actually also attached um, to the region of the, the region of the greater trochanter. Then you can have what are known as subcapital fractures or trochanteric fractures. Subcapital fractures are going to be more common in uh, adults, most trochanteric fractures are actually going to be more common in young children. And the blood supply to the head, earlier on I said that you're going to have a small artery that is going to come via the four cavities within the ligament of the head, a small branch from the obturator the artery. Then you're going to have another artery that is the medial circumflex iliac artery coming from uh, below the neck. And those two arterial systems will not anastomose up until you have closure of the epiphyseal feet, and that is around 20 years of age. But then after closure, if you're going to then have a fracture at the neck, you're going to uh, restrict the blood flow within the medial uh, circumflex femoral artery to reach the head. So at the end of the day, you're going to have um, an avascular necrosis of the head because uh, the blood supply that is actually going to come from the uh, ligament of the head is actually not going to be enough. So that's just about it.